one of these days, I'm going to decide to go out and find that brother, brothers and sisters, because I want to know the rest of that story. I want to know what happened to him. I want to know what led up to that moment. I want to know why he decided to do that. My name's Salim, and oh, brothers and sisters, I'm going to go find that brother of ours, and I want to hear that story firsthand. Are you with me, brothers and sisters? Is that a journey you're ready to take? You see, I don't understand at this point. I'm thinking to myself, how am I supposed to take care of my father? So I'm saying, okay, you know, I'm stuck now. I can't go back to school. I'm here. I'm married. Maybe I'll spend time with the family, start getting back into the family business and do stuff, you know, back into the, the responsibilities of life. I'm married now. I'm supposed to be thinking, you know, kind of a higher perspective long term. You know, what am I doing with myself? So how does this story really go? Because now the focus changes and I'm thinking again about money and thinking about the world and thinking about how to put myself in the position and how do I play this game on the, the chessboard of life and how do I work the money angle because now I'm married, now I'm supposed to be responsible. Now, of course, brothers and sisters, to say I know nothing about money by this point, I'm already in my early 20s, but you got to understand. I was buying and selling property by the first moment I was 18 years old. We were buying and selling property in Houston, Texas during the late 80s and the saving and loans crisis, and so... I had already been involved in the money game from foreclosures and trades and all kinds of different things. But to tell the story properly and to really understand what it was to get involved again in the money world, I got to tell you how this really starts for our family. Because right now in the West, you hear all kinds of different things about money and changes and government and the war and the dark versus the light and the new currency and gold and silver and a possible change in everything. Rumors about secret trusts and funds and different mysterious sources of untold treasures. That which people call Nasara? Oh, brothers and sisters, boys and girls, you're listening to Hot Conflict, and you know, upon this earth, there are those who truly understand and those who don't know what they're talking about at all. Those who know what they are searching for have found something in their brother. I know very little, but what I know and when I speak and when I tell you a story, we go all the way. Colonial times. Are we talking about fighting? The colonial times. Is this a revolution? Are we going to war? Or is there going to be absolutely no blood spilt whatsoever? Oh, brothers and sisters, you know it and I say it. I am a mujahid, Mr. President. But I am not a terrorist. There will be no blood spilt by the name of Allah and on the authority of the Prophet anymore on this earth once the word is truly understood. But how does anybody understand the real story? For me, we start back. In the 20s and 30s, all the way in the lands of the East, the place that you call the ancient land of India, the ancient land of mysticism, the mysticism of the East, the land of Rama, what those of the ancient Sanskrit call the motherland 
Mahabharat, the ancient land of the source. Mm. It is a strange tale where we find a young man named Mashuk Ani. He's a tough guy, huge, tall, warrior, class. You had to be tough in those days just to survive. You see, the British had begun and had colonized India. And you had two choices. Fall in line with the new rule of the Queen and the rule of Britannia. Or be branded a terrorist and an enemy of the state and the empire. Young Mashuakani takes a position as a constable serving in colonial India. A big guy, a wrestler, huge, on the beat, on the streets, a cop with a baton, walking the colonial streets in India, a Muslim in Hindu dominated India promoting the new colonial empire. As he would testify, it was the only way to survive. It allowed me to be in a position where I could get the official documents and official records of land ownership to even figure out what it was possibly like to even own a morsel of a piece of the earth under the empire so that one day when the right situation and the right moment and the right juxtaposition of occurrence could occur, I would be in a position where the checkerboard of fate would serve me in a position of chess where I would make that move. From being a pawn who's on the street in a uniform to someone who has a piece of land so that just maybe I could build my own little home my own little house, my own little castle. And when the moment was right, and when he got the right person bribing the wrong guy, or when he caught the wrong person doing the wrong underhanded deal, and when he had his chance to take care of his position, to do what anybody had to do in those days, lie, cheat, bribe, steal, anything to survive, to get a single piece of morsel of food or bread. To be an employee of the empire so that your family would be allowed ration coupons to get a basic staple diet so that your kids wouldn't die on the streets. Mashuk Ali he testifies that when that chance came and when somebody had screwed up and not made their mortgage payment and the crowd had taken over and the right piece of property in the little town that he was in came up on the auction block and it was under the jurisdiction of the guy he knew who was underhanded and tried to cheat. He got him to put that paperwork on sale. And he said to him, listen, all I need you to do is hold the auction instead of at the courthouse at the location of the property. It's not a violation at all. Hold it in the Muslim area of town where the property just happens to be. And if you happen to 
hold the auction Friday during the sermon while no one happens to be around on the street? Well, that might be a good idea. Yes, brothers and sisters, right during the Juma Chutbah, if we're going to take advantage, he says, might as well get full advantage. That was what it was like to be a Muslim in colonial times. That was the first piece of land known to be owned by those of the clan of my family who called themselves Siddiqui. And that is the house where my father grew up. You see, all kids grew up in those days planning to come to the West and own land, own property, and if you could make it, if you could make it to America, you might actually be able to fulfill the dreams of your forefathers. For closure <laughs> by the Empire. It's the early 90s. I'm in Houston. Everything's about foreclosure and trade of real estate. I had gotten my real estate license at the age 1920. Before I had even gone to Bosnia, I was selling, buying and selling and trading property left, right, and center. Now I'd gotten married. And we're talking about money and we're talking about trade. And so when I say we're going to be making announcements about money and trade, I want brothers and sisters to know. I've had a real estate license, a mortgage lender's license, a stockbroker's license, Blue Sky, Series 7, 63. I've traded professionally. I've traded options. I've traded currencies. I can do a call calendar spread, a bull call spread, an iron butterfly. We can put in together positions with stocks and options that will create money out of nothingness. I've traded currencies professionally back in the day before there was digital charts. Back when you had to chart by hand, Japanese candlestick drawn by hand, reading the traditional way. So when people ask me, do I know what I'm talking about, about the financial world? These are all things that I did early at this time. And I'm buying and selling property. And so, there I am. I'm in my early 20s. Knocking on the front door of the properties and knocking them over, saying it. My name's Salim Siddiqui. I own this land. You'll have three days to evacuate from this premises, or the sheriff of this county is going to evacuate you and your belongings for you. You have been foreclosed on, and I and the current owner of this year property. This is the order of the courts. Yes, brothers and sisters. We've come a long way, hadn't we? A generation, two, maybe three, and here I was now in the land of America, buying and selling property and foreclosing it, on it, on others. And I was proud of myself. You see, now I'm buying and trading and I'm getting stuff and I'm managing real estate and you know how it is. 